Jumpstart is easily one of the biggest edutainment franchises to have ever existed. Ever since 1994, they've been putting out games for numerous different grades and age groups. Many of their creations are beloved by those who grew up with them, and they've continued to be one of the most recognizable franchises in the edutainment genre. One part of Jumpstart that stood out to me was the Adventure series. This was a period where the games were released with heavier storylines than the usual party game experiences you'd get from most Jumpstart games. Many people would agree that Jumpstart 3rd Grade was an incredible addition to their childhood. The characters were cool, the games were fun, and the overall atmosphere really kept you motivated as you tried to beat that evil little brat, Polly Sparks. Fourth Grade Haunted Island sent you on a quest to save your classmates from an evil teacher on an island filled with spooky monsters. Many also fondly remember this one, but it was significantly harder than other Jumpstart titles at the time. It was recalled from stores for unknown reasons, but many theorize it's because people found it too scary for kids. Then came 5th grade, Joe Hammett Kid Detective. While the characters, humor, storyline, and voice acting were good, the game itself suffered from a few issues. I'm really sorry that I have to say this, but remember, this is an edutainment game. Where's the edu and where's the tainment? It's not educational if you're already supposed to know the stuff going in, and it's not entertainment if it's just math. That's what it is. It's just math. There's no game here or anything. Ultimately, my criticisms came down to the fact that the game required the player to find obscure information without providing any means of assistance. You had to do long division, but never once did the game try to walk you through it or provide any means of entertainment alongside it. As I said, it was just math. This made me a little concerned going into 6th grade. I didn't grow up playing this one, so I set a few expectations for myself going into it. I wanted to see less repetition, since that was an issue in all the previous games, but it became increasingly more apparent when 5th grade only had you play the same few minigames over and over again, while the others at least cycled through different ones. I also expected this game to have a comfortable balance of gameplay and education, not, well, just math. Finally, most importantly of all, I expected the game to try and teach you something rather than force you to look everything up to get past a temporary obstacle. This was Jumpstart's 20th game, I'm not even joking. Surely this would be far more refined than the games before it. So, can Jumpstart 6th grade Mission EarthQuest live up to my expectations? Let's find out. At the start, we're brought to a very intricate login screen. You get this professor named Uncle Eli who's giving you random facts as you put your name in. I love how this menu just exudes old game energy. It kind of looks like an old website from the 90s or early 2000s. However, what's weird is what Uncle Eli says whenever you press a certain key on your keyboard that he doesn't like. Danger! That key is not allowed! What danger? Is the aircraft gonna explode because I tried to type a semicolon? In the opening cutscene, we see a monkey named Enos launch himself into space with a rocket ship. However, his computer is overrun by an evil AI program named Art, who takes control of the ship. I guess AI Art really did get out of hand. This AI's goal is to gather space debris and take over Earth by creating robots out of it. Enos is able to send an SOS signal to this group of... action heroes, I guess which consists of two siblings, a dog, and Uncle Eli. Check out how fast-paced this dialogue is. What's going on with the map? I don't know, Uncle Eli. It just started going haywire. I just saw a monkey. Cut the clowning, Jess. This is serious. I'm telling you, I saw a monkey. Hey, isn't a monkey manning that World Watch satellite launch? They don't send monkeys into space anymore. Now they must travel all throughout Earth to stop the robots from causing a ruckus. Apparently, Uncle Eli helped build art, which is neat for character development, but not really delved into. Art is kind of like a mix of Hal from 2001 A Space Odyssey and Brainiac from Superman. Also, whenever you load the game, you have to watch the opening cutscene again. Not sure why, but at least it's skippable. Now we're brought into the main screen of the game, the same place you'll go after completing every minigame. You can click around the base to see different little animations, but they aren't really important for now. What's interesting is how your utility belt, a feature throughout every Jumpstart Adventures game, is represented by two mechanical gloves with a bunch of features on them. It's a little overwhelming to look at, to say the least. You get the hang of it, but it's the first thing you see after starting the game, and it can be a lot to take in without an explanation. When you go to this terribly inaccurate map, you can select a minigame to play, then you get to choose which character to bring along on the mission. 
It really just determines who talks to you the whole time, so pick whichever voice you prefer listening to. Now let's take a look at some of these mini-games. The first one is called Canopy Crusade. There's a bulldozer going through a forest, and questions appear at the top of the screen with multiple choice answers beneath them. You move a helicopter to a sandbag with the correct answer on it, then you drop it on the bulldozer. Sounds easy enough, right? Oops, I was supposed to drop the resource bag on that bulldozer! I missed the bulldozer! That wasn't the right grid! I should be aiming for the one with that hideous bulldozer! Oh boy. Better prepare yourselves for this one. The controls are horrible. You have this really bad drift that sends you flying across the screen whenever you lightly tap the arrow keys, so it's hard to land exactly where you want to go. I missed the bulldozer! Get used to hearing that. Trying to drop these sandbags on the constantly moving bulldozer is nearly impossible. That's not the drop zone! I need to drop it on the bulldozer! You know what this reminds me of? Your yields did not meet the goal. And you know what else? How are you meant to know the answers to all these questions? They don't provide you with a textbook or an aspect of the game to help you figure them out. Some of them are just basic facts, but others can get more obscure. How are you supposed to learn if the game doesn't actually teach? An edutainment game shouldn't be a matter of just guessing. Jumpstart, you can do better than this. But you want to know what's really frustrating? The game added a new feature that was really, really unnecessary. Whenever you get an answer wrong enough times, Uncle Eli will stop the game and force you to answer some random question because apparently it's supposed to make you smarter. Again, it's just a guessing game if you don't know the answer. All it does is interrupt the flow of the minigame. I can assure you that nobody who plays this is going to enjoy this feature, so why add it? Maybe if it asked a question that appeared in the minigame, it would be a little more helpful, but it never does. You can't just stop the game for no real reason like this. So back to Canopy Crusade. Once you beat it, you get a new minigame entirely where you have to do... something. I really don't understand it. I just click around and see what happens. Supposedly, you have to beat an AI at this very advanced version of Connect 4, but it's actually really hard and the game does a really bad job of explaining the rules. Again, why is this necessary? I already beat the educational part, why do I have to win this in order for it to count? Let's just move on from here. Okay, so maybe it was a bad choice of minigame. Maybe the others are a little more... playable. Let's give this another shot. Every so often, at seemingly random intervals, you have to play this other minigame on your way to play your intended one. You have to shoot the words that correlate with the one on screen, then use pieces of those words to crack a code. This is supposed to activate your landing gear. It's fine, and actually somewhat educational, but it does kind of disrupt the flow of the game. If you just want to beat the minigame so you can catch the robots and win, this can be a little unpleasant whenever it gets in the way of it. Now on to the next mission. In this one, you're moving a pod across a tree stump to solve fractions while avoiding killer insects. This one also has awkward controls because you're moving in a circular pattern. I can't always tell where my pod is going to land. Sometimes I can't get it to move at all for some reason. And yeah, the bugs eat the answers you need to collect. This one's better than the last mission because it's a lot more forgiving when you get an answer wrong, but it still doesn't really make an effort to teach you anything. Also, whenever you complete five problems in a row, you get this cutscene. Then the game continues, so I'm not sure why it's necessary. None of the other missions have anything like that. And now, here comes one of my biggest criticisms for the game as a whole. You have to play every single stage over and over and over and over and over and a lot more and overs than that. You're trying to collect pod points, which you only get by completing a certain number of rounds. Every so often, Uncle Eli will give you an advantage you can use in the game by pressing the tab button. Sometimes they help, but other times they make things worse. In some games, you might be trying to go slow to avoid enemies, but your advantage makes you speed up. You also risk freezing enemies somewhere you need to go. So yeah, use these sparingly. Like in third grade, your goal is to find all the robots. Only after collecting five pod gadgets or advantages will you actually be able to catch the robot. There's one robot per minigame, so you just have to play each of them a ludicrous amount of times to unlock it. 
I just gotta say, I am extremely sorry to all the Jumpstart games I criticized for being repetitive in the past. This one definitely feels like it drags the most. And yeah, when you die, they send you back to base. They don't have anything on the screen to tell you when you're close to death, though. Every so often, after a mission, you'll get a cutscene of Art and Enos messing around, like this one. Enos. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Was this what passed for humor in the 90s? Eventually, you can go into this big hatch in the main room. This is where you bring robots after you find them. We really should be out capturing robots to rewire. Until we have one, there's nothing we can do down here. We really should be out capturing robots to rewire. Until we have one, there's nothing we can do down here. Thanks for telling me that twice, I almost forgot. This next mission is called Monument Mischief. Here you're on a pyramid and you have to jump to tiles to match an answer with the blank space on the left of the screen. As you can see from the footage, I had absolutely no idea how to start moving. I actually thought my game was broken until I hit enough buttons. Since it's on an angle, the controls are just as awkward here as they are in the bug one. It's okay, but it does require looking things up. It's also confusing. Sometimes I can't find the right answers even after checking every block. I seriously wonder if they just randomly appear. The next one is called Mind Games, even though it takes place underwater. It's basically the same as Canopy Crusade, except there are these torpedo fish that you can't touch. They also pursue you, which makes it really hard to reach the answers you need. So far, this is the one I have the least amount of problems with, though it isn't always clear if something's an obstacle or part of the background. Now we're on to Viral Vanguard, and boy is this one a mess. The controls are even worse than they were in Canopy Crusade because you're moving as if you're underwater. Ironically, this isn't the underwater stage. The game is constantly pushing against you, fighting you whenever you try to move. You have to land on the correct answer to a question while avoiding these virus nanobots, but for some reason it doesn't always work. I have to repeatedly hit the enter key in order for the game to register something as my answer. It gives the nanobots time to hit you even though you should have won by then. Sometimes you have to let them hit you because they're standing in the way of the correct answer. Don't you just love that? Afterwards, you have to kill the nanobots in front of this giant gaping hole. I really don't know what it's supposed to be, so use your imagination. Next up we have Pollution Solution. You have to solve math problems by turning the right valves in front of you. Surprisingly, this isn't just math. There's actually a game here. I'm really bad at math, so it still comes down to just guessing a lot of the time, mostly for the measurement questions, but it's an improvement from how 5th grade handled its math stage. After you complete a round, you get a game where you have to jump over chemical spills. It's really easy, all you do is just keep jumping. Then you repeat the process. Yippee! So that's it for the minigame, so let me show you what happens when a robot finally appears. You have to shoot it a bunch of times in space, then your dog runs out and absorbs it. You then take it into your base to rewire it. You play a matching game, then you match coordinates on a grid, then you're good to go. Now you have to do that five more times, completing a seemingly endless series of minigames along the way. Think you can handle that? Well, all there's left to show is the ending. But would you believe there are actually two endings? They aren't very different, but this hardly struck me as the type of game to have more than one. Of course, when you lose the water mission, you get this cutscene of your submarine exploding. That's the canon one. But let's have a look at them. You're able to destroy the rocket with Art in it, Enos gets out in an escape pod, but Art somehow comes with him. Then they turn Art into a bowling scorekeeper or a virtual chess game, depending on which ending you get. And that about does it. So, that was Mission EarthQuest. What do we think? Your yields did not meet the goal. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I tried. I really wanted to be nice, but I also have to be honest. I did not have a good experience playing this game. None of the minigames were fun, they all just seemed like a bunch of quizzes or tests. There were also too many unnecessary additions that only made the gaming experience worse. And most of all, I don't feel any smarter after playing it. I gave the same criticism to 5th grade, but it also applies here. How is it educational if you're already supposed to know the answers? The game doesn't teach you anything, it hits you with random questions and makes you answer them with whatever knowledge you currently have. 
Now, maybe this was meant to be played as part of a curriculum where the questions in the game pertain to what was being taught in a class. But even if that's the case, then this game really is nothing more than a shameless series of tests. If it isn't going to teach, then what's the point of even having educational stuff in the game to begin with? You might as well be playing any other game at that point. Half-Life came out that same year. You could probably learn more about science in that than you can in this. Gameplay aside, I can't even say I like the story or the characters. I don't really know anything about these guys. They just kind of throw us in without any explanation as to who these EarthQuest people are or what they do. There are interactions here and there, but they're minimal and not really explored. I don't find anything about this universe interesting. This is easily the weakest in terms of both gameplay and storytelling out of all the Jumpstart Adventures games. Maybe it had potential, but it wasn't used to its fullest. That's all I really have to say about that. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.